Welcome to the January 2024 Composing Competition live stream. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody, and thanks for joining us. So if you're new to this, uh, we put out a call in January for original pieces of instrumental music up to 90 seconds in length that were inspired by this artwork by Hardy Fowler who is with us today, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So today we had around 500 entries and today we picked 12 of them uh, to listen to and critique and give feedback on. And then we will announce the top three winners. So the way the critique works is we will listen for composition, things like, you know, melodies, harmonies, satisfying build up and conclusion, all the kind of the musical stuff, the notes. Uh, we also will listen for production value. So does it sound convincing? If it's trying to be an orchestra, does it sound like an orchestra? Um, just, you know, over, how's the overall impression of the sound of the music? And then finally, relevance to the prompt image. So do the instrument choices fit the vibe? You know, are you telling the same story that we're getting from the image and all of that? Uh, we have prizes for the top three. So thank you to Loot Audio, Bliss, and Spitfire for offering those to our our winners. So from Loot Audio, third place will get the Fame Boy Virtual Instrument, second place gets the U Synth Pixel, and first place will win a set of Xenos presets. From Bliss, third place gets the Bliss Arpeggiator, second gets the Bliss Arpeggiator and Bliss Shimmer, and first gets the Bliss Arpeggiator and the Bliss Alpha and Omega synths. And then finally, from Spitfire Audio, first place will get their choice of Abbey Road 1 Library. Uh, oh, I keep bumping my table, sorry. Okay, so we actually will have four judges today. Uh, one of them is running a little behind, but hopefully he'll be here soon. Uh, so I will go in the order you guys are on screen for now. First, we have Christopher Siu. Christopher Siu is a composer, orchestrator, and fellow educator who has worked with artists including Tina Guo, and Catherine Dern, David Wise, Stephen Mellon, and Rumi Official. A few of his credits include music and orchestrations for Hallmark's romantic comedy, Her Pen Pal, as well as original music and arrangements for the Dark Dice series, which won awards including Best Original Score at the 2022 Signal Awards. Chris has an on-demand workshop taking you through the entire composing and orchestration process from start to finish. So if you want to check that out, head to ChristopherCU.com slash framework. Chris, thanks for being here. Thanks as always. As always. Next, we have Gavin Leeper. Gavin Leeper is a composer and music educator. His YouTube channel explores the music of Japanese anime and video games through the lenses of jazz harmony and classical orchestration. He was previously a band leader for jazz and math rock projects, studied economics at Stanford, and worked as a data scientist at Spotify Japan before taking the plunge on a music career. Today, he's composing music for video games like Secret of Moonlight and Roto Magnet also teaching students from around the world. So, Gavin-san, hi, Karawazi. Yoroshikune. Yoroshikune. Hi. And we also have, sorry, Hardy, you're not used to that one. <laughs> we, have, we do that. One of time. our bits. Um, <laughs> and we also have Hardy Fowler. So this is a first for us. He is the artist behind uh, our inspiration artwork. And so we have a unique angle about hearing, you know, we have our own opinions about, oh, does that music fit? You know, is that that's what the artist meant, right? And and now we actually can hear it from the artists themselves. So Hardy Fowler is a professional concept artist and illustrator with over a decade of industry experience. His clients include Disney, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, and scores of video game and film clients. Hardy founded and operates an online learning platform called Digital Painting Studio, helping artists design and paint the worlds within. So Hardy, thanks for being here. Thanks, this is so cool. Appreciate you guys having me. Uh, and our last judge is running a little behind. I'll read his intro <clears throat> so then he can just dive in when it's time, I guess. So we will also be joined by Ben Kidd, who you may know as 8-Bit Music Theory. So 8-Bit, the creator of the 8-Bit Music Theory YouTube channel, makes videos picking apart what makes our favorite video game music so great. Using a mixture of technical music theory analysis and broad musical observations, 8-Bit aims to provide musical insights to beginners and experts alike. So we will, we will let him join the stream when he's able to. Um, I think that is most of the preamble, right? Let's see. Sounds so, good. Yeah. 
Uh, there is a uh, a bit of an unfair advantage, I think, always to going first. So I thought this time, instead of making one of the entrants go first, I would play the track that I wrote, because some people were asking about that. I made a video about how I wrote a track based on uh, my interpretation of the image. And so I think we'll start there, and then we'll begin. And that'll give 8-Bit another minute, too. Do we get to critique it, too? or? Uh, <laughs> you know, anyway. keep your private, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. right, let me mute here. <laughs> Consider that a five across the board, and now as you give scores, that'll be your benchmark. Beautiful. So, good. all right, are we ready Let's to actually it. begin? Yes. Let's right. do it. Our first track is Cosmic Equilibrium from Raphael Bossard. And I'm going to mute every time I hit a track. start us off Chris yeah for sure yeah I mean beautiful start I think the dark tone of this piece um, for me is quite relevant to the image like when I heard this uh, immediately I thought okay I could definitely feel this as part of this scene if it was a you know if it was part of a movie or something I could definitely feel that and to me the solo string felt like it was live I could be wrong but it felt like a really smooth performance with some nice um, passion baked within the the sound for sure. And I like how you kind of opened up with the choir in the second half. It really felt like there was some contrast there and the transition was also really seamless. It felt like it bloomed into a really nice full arrangement. The only nitpick I might have is just like the low end in some parts 
uh, with some of the chordal elements felt a little heavy to me. Um, I think it's just because you were playing triads in sort of the lower octaves of the keyboard. So especially when they're like electric sounds um, with a lot of body and the sound, those can build up really, really quickly. So just be careful with the frequency distribution, I would say. I think you had enough high elements. I just think the, the, the electric keys or whatever that sound was in the bottom was a tad heavy for my taste. Um, but overall, I think it was really full, really lush, and I think it suited the the, the theme really well. Me next or no? Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, I um, I think the thing that helped um, it was interesting. There was there was a way in which the the parts of the production helped with the relevance to the image. Like since we have a sci-fi image, um, having like convincing synth sounds really helps you know helps me to recall blade runner tron uh tron you know any of the references that uh, the reference ips that this might be referencing um so i think that really helped for you know that was that was kind of a positive feedback loop if you will that it um it was scoring points on its own but also some of the production decisions because there were there was some good synth work on there I was more convinced it felt diegetic, right? Like, oh, that's what that's what music sounds like when this guy gets on his his, you know, cyber cycle or whatever I want to call it, right? So that that was that was really fitting, I thought. You wanna go ahead, Hardy? Uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, so with all of these, it's interesting the parallels between visual art and music, kind of the storytelling and just that sort of two second gut reaction that I think we all get from both. Those are both priorities with the image and I'm sure with music too. This hit on both of those I thought really well. It kind of felt like the world I envisioned um, and it it kind of hooked you in immediately. Uh, yeah, all, all the instrument choices felt genre appropriate and it just created that atmosphere. So I enjoyed it a lot and it felt very on target. Nice. Well, well done, Raphael. <laughs> we'll go to the next one. Let's do it. All right. So next up, we have What a Bot Love from Jay Connor. Welcome, Eight Bit. What's up, Ben? Hey, hey! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Glad you made it. <laughs> um, we'll we'll have you. We introduced you already, so glad you could join us. I think we'll just dive into Gavin's feedback, and then we'll is your mic on, Eight Bit? I can't. I can't hear that. Yeah, we oh, can't hear you yet. All right. No. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right, Gavin. How about we, yeah. we talk about Jay's track? Yeah, um, strong, strong track. Um, I I liked quite a few things, um, but since we'll have 
multiple people saying lots of different stuff. I'll go right into um, something I noticed that I kind of kind of docked composition points for me. Um, when you are when you got it kind of initially were establishing the groove, there wasn't a heavy enough backbeat, as in like emphasis on two and four. Um, and so because of that, um, I think I, I at least experienced a little bit of a glitch in listening back to it took me maybe, you know, five or six measures to figure out what the time signature was. And you don't want your listener to be kind of distracted by by that. Right. So um, because because so, you had like a lot of glitchy aspects going on, like a lot of glitch elements, really cool, really fitting for the style, right? Um, just make sure to not go too crazy with those because it can distract from the percussion's main job in this in this scenario, which is to establish that that groove. Um, because if I'm thinking about what time signature is this in, I'm not listening to the the content of the song, right? Um, but Otherwise, you know, we're going to have to nitpick this whole time. That's my nitpicky thing. So good, good job. Otherwise, obviously, you made it this far. Nice. Uh, how about we, we'll keep going in the circle. So Hardy, can you, can you take it next? Yeah, what's really interesting about this is, is hearing how other people interpreted the story of the image just based on the tone. And this one is was so cheerful that sort of surprised me a little bit because I I, I think you kind of don't know if this is a breakup or like, you know, is she going to get on the motorcycle? Like, are, are these kids going to make it in this tough town or is this goodbye? Um, so that's fascinating to me to like hear how people felt the story, how these artists felt the story. Um, I, I imagined it to be significantly sadder and more of a, a bummer actually than, than I was hearing there. But this is all incredibly fascinating for me to kind of hear the different artistic interpretations of what I was imagining. But I mean, beautiful and engaging and genre appropriate, but I was mostly keying in on the like the story vibe and how how different the interpretations are likely to be. And that's just so cool for me. Yeah, if um, if Ben's thing is not working, I can go next. But okay, no so <laughs> he'll come back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like this one, I think the biggest contrast compared to the first piece so far is the more like the overall consistency in terms of the palette. Like I felt I was really drawn into the scene, and I almost really wanted to see the the picture in action because the the music itself had a very nice sort of consistent backdrop that I could. Um, almost sort of anticipate, like I, I sort of deep down knew that there weren't going to be big, big surprises, just kind of the way you set things up. So I really appreciated it from that regard. And mm -hmm. it, it almost was like an underscore in a certain way. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it from that that view. And I thought the elements you chose uh, worked really well. I think a couple of the glitchy elements were a tad, tad loud on my side, but um, that, that could just be me. But yeah, the overall palette was just uh, really relevant for for my taste very similar to the first one so um i think that also it helps that you're choosing a slightly darker key as well if i remember correctly it's like around c minor or something so you have multiple flats and to me flats tend to feel a little on the darker side anyway but if you go sharp and super bright then it might not be quite as relevant so i felt like this was very hmm. not peaceful but like it, it it was rich you know and, and it felt like it had that base that i could just sit back and relax and enjoy so really pleasant Nice. All right, nice, Jay. Ben, 8-Bit, are you with us? Let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay. Hey, okay. <laughs> we did it. How you been? Sorry, oh, I've on, been man. good. I've been, I've been, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm coming off of a wild weekend of sickness, so oh, right. sorry, <laughs> if man. I sound a little gravelly, that's why. No, no, no. Thanks for, thanks for making it. All right, yeah. let's go to the next one. <clears throat> uh, so next we have Fates intertwined from Kenaniah Dean Belial. Switch this. Here we go.
Hardy, do you mind starting us off? Yeah, uh, love that. And that kind of what I was talking about with the last track, that this one like really hit the tone exactly for me. It's also really interesting how the different phases, movements, I'm not musically educated, uh, different parts of the song kind of make me think of different shots. And that one actually made me, I want to see like the next scene. I want some other like establishing shots of this cityscape. Um, really cool. But that that felt very much on target with the whole vibe check. Uh, just the story being told there. This this was the tone, I imagine, for sure. Really nice. Thanks. 8-Bit, can you, you join join the chat here? I guess. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> this is, that was really cool. That gave me near vibes, near, you know. Nice. Um, the, uh, the kind of playing with orchestral sounds mixed in with synth, like obviously synthesized sounds is like a cool texture. And um, and also that like have, having the kind of floating vocal melody over top of the super busy synth stuff. There's a lot of really cool textural uh, choices, and I think fit like fitting to the picture just with the sci-fi theme and the obvious synth stuff. And um, felt very like uh, like a, uh, film score e to me kind of. Like a near near the movie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another beautiful track. I think the first thing that stands out for me is that it's, to me, it feels very well mixed and produced. Like, I really like the production quality and it feels very polished. Um, and with what Ben was saying regarding the elements uh, working together, all the sort of instrumental choices, they all seem to really fit the image and um, and already confirming that. It was just um really, really pleasant experience. And I think the only thing for me was that I was, because the, the synth stuff was quite busy at the beginning and then kind of carrying on to the piece, you had more stuff developing, but my ear was also kind of wanting more of a, of a theme from the start. So I, I sensed like you were building up, you had things coming and I just kind of wanted to hear a theme come in a little earlier. And then when you had that vocal melody coming, it sounded really beautiful. I just wished it was turn up just, just a tad more so I could hear it a bit more clearly. But um, overall, it, it again, gave me that sort of uh, film score sort of vibe, almost like underscore sort of thing where you really have action happening on screen and it's, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like matching it really well. So um, yeah, very, very suitable. Uh, this is my favorite one so far. I felt it was really resonant for me. Um, so I, I think I have no notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, like excellent job. Uh, like, like Chris was saying, I think everything just worked together super well. Um, and gave me, you know, on, on the one side, there were unique elements of it. And then there were also elements that reminded me of kind of this hybrid orchestral, uh, kind of approach that you might have heard in Interstellar or, or films like that, uh, that that also felt just super appropriate for the for the world that Hardy was was building. So excellent job. All right. Well, thanks, Ken and I. Enjoy that one. On to the next one. All right. Next, we have a lover's gaze from Mitchell Oath.
you start us off 8-bit on this one? I think you're first this um, time. Yeah, that <laughs> was interesting. It was a cool, like, speaking to the relevancy of the to the image, I really liked how this kind of put a different, put the image in a different perspective where it wasn't just, like, describing musically what you can see as far as the sci-fi elements and the, you know, slightly ambiguous but some kind of relationship between these two characters. Um, but it, it, right from the beginning, it really put it into this perspective of, like, emphasizing the nightlife of like you're looking at a city you know what i mean a futuristic city and and so it kind of mm. made me think about it a different way which i really liked like oh yeah what would it actually be like to be in a big futuristic city and like probably there'd be a lot of people going out drinking and stuff you know what i mean um so that was cool just that aesthetic approach the uh the uh kind of mixture of edm and and city pop elements was yep interesting uh i feel like i wasn't 100 percent sold on that mixture though mm. i don't know <laughs> I, i'm curious what the rest of you think about that specifically mm. i i did really like i like the beginning a lot um my my big criticism is that i think it was a little bit too wandering where halfway through i was kind of like oh where's it going now and then by the end i was like oh okay whoa what what <laughs> have that like cohesion beginning to end right. um but it was very interesting and i did like the uh the uh the the uh conceptual choice <laughs> it did feel like one of the ones that wished it had 30 more seconds i feel i think a little bit you know that maybe mm-hmm. wrapped it brought it back together. around yeah, or something yeah, totally. yeah. yeah. Um, and that i think that 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 was my main critique actually is that i was slightly left hanging with the ending um, I wish, I wish it wasn't a snap. Like I wish it was either a kick or some sort of long extended chord that tapered off, that faded out, or something like that. Um, but that being said, this is one of the tracks where I heard it and I was listening, and I was like, "Oh, Ben's gonna get a kick out of this harmony." You know, all those descending transition chords and blah blah blah. It was, it was so <laughs> spicy, um, and I know Gavin probably loved it as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is this is definitely like my vibe of track too. Um, very different from the ones we've heard so far, but uh, like Ben said, it's an entirely new sort of perspective, very chill, and gives me very lo-fi instrumental sort of uh, vibes, and I really like that a lot. And when I first saw this image, the first key that actually came to my mind was E flat minor, and this piece was in E flat minor, so I, it's totally sold me on that as well. And hmm. for me, that that really put me in that that headspace, and so. Yeah, I think the only critique I had was just that that very ending. I wish it had a little more time, but otherwise, um, I, I was super into it. Yeah. Gavin, it's me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I quite enjoyed the the city pop interpretation, um, given how, you know, the the themes of city pop are about moving to the city from the countryside and what city life is like, and it's a really you know, we have the the two uh, the two people at the center of the image, but the majority of the image is a cityscape. So I, I loved that choice thematically as well. Um, I think toward that one thing, one thing that this is different that a real city pop recording would have that this doesn't is much more live sounding and fat bass, right? Like mm. if I listen to a city pop record, I'm like, I wish I were the bass player on this. If I could be anybody in the band. So the bass player is doing the coolest stuff, right? Um, so I think, you know, uh, wh- whatever you, whatever tools you've got, this, the, the bass tone here, um, you know, wasn't, wasn't fat enough to give me that like, oh, this is, you know, this is has these like disco inspirations and funk inspirations and things like that, right? Um, so I think that could have helped toward toward selling this uh, this fusion of it. But yeah, I, I really like just sort of the the artistic premise of it of like, oh, this is like the I don't know the the panning shot at the end of uh, like this is like the Cowboy Bebop episode uh, interpretation or something like that. Um, felt like a very different vibe. Uh, so so. You know, kudos for doing that. Yeah, instead of bass, Gavin. Though I think you should put some bassoon in there. Bassoon, yeah, yeah, for definitely. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Right. Coming up, <laughs> bassoon commissions. There yeah, we that's go. My main thing now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Love that. 
Hardy. Awesome. Any, any no, really cool there? and so wildly different. It's crazy how different all of these int- interpretations are. Yeah, like steamy saxophone right out of the gate kind of made me smile a little bit just because it was so jarringly different. And I don't know, it made it feel like this sort of uh, 80s, like uh, romantic thriller kind of movie vibe that actually does seem to fit cyberpunk quite well. I actually liked it when it switched from the saxophone, which I think I found distracting maybe, into the more uh, synth lead that seemed to let the whole thing just, um, I don't know, hit a little bit. I wasn't keying in on that one instrument so much, but another beauty and just so cool. How many different ways to interpret this are, this is kind of blowing my mind. So great <laughs> work. Actually, an interesting thought would be to save the saxophone till later. Cause I feel like that's kind of a city pop cliche. Right. It's like you, you build the song up to a climax and then the big climax is boom, big, big uh, screaming yeah. sack. We would all be like, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. isn't that the Tears of the Kingdom main theme, though? Right. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, and it works so well. <laughs> it, it, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, onward. Next, we have Chrome Heartbeat from Leo Bilon. Always mute. God, God hit us with the Bacardi theory, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just got to. Um, yeah, very, very interesting, actually. I gave this one like a bonus point because the first half reminded me of Mario Galaxy, but it just kind of bumped it up slightly with the drums and there was a bit more electronic stuff happening there. And then the second half, the guitar came in and started to make it feel uh, more more EDM stuff or you know more synthy. And, uh, and, and then I started to get more into the, the picture. But... Yeah, another one of those pieces that felt kind of like it was developing from start to finish. And then I also wish there was a bit, a bit, a bit more at the end. Um, maybe a slightly more satisfying ending. Maybe um, if you had more time, maybe you expand the major section a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Like I feel like Bacardi Third is a very specific technique that you would want to use only in certain situations. And if you are going to transition to parallel major, maybe just expand that into like a full phrase or at least, you know, uh, a period or something. But um, yeah, in terms of the vibes though, the instrument uh, instrumentation, I really enjoyed it, but I did like the galaxy vibe with that Lydian sort of sound in there. That was kind of pretty. Is it me? Yeah, it is. I Go think so, it. yes. Okay, so I'm always after Chris. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, there's a pattern here. Yep. Um, I think what would be really like, I'm just, uh, because there's so many interpretations, I think it'd be really interesting to hear, like have a version of this where it's the submissions and there's a voiceover actor who's like selling the interpretation. Um, because in, in this case, like the interpretation I got was like, 
yeah, kid, the city ain't so bad. Like, I'll, I'll show you around. Just stick with me. And it's like this magical sort of montage of like, wow, there's all this, like, what an interesting futuristic city. Um, but anyway, it's, it's just like, um, you know, back on Hardy's point of just there being so many valid interpretations of just an image. Um, yeah, I wonder, it's, it's fun to, uh, it's fun being in this seat and imagining each of the, uh, kind of drawn out. Um, but you know, this was, this was really effective in taking it in a, in a very sort of different direction. Um, I'm really enjoying how it's not every one of these is, is focusing on the darkness. It's, it's, this is more like the, the starry night, um, kind of, kind of interpretation of it, um, which I quite enjoyed. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the sense I got was this was trying to capture some sort of like the the romance between the characters in the picture um, mm -hmm. from the kind of like heartbeat e kick drum echoey kick drum thing. Um, I I'm not like a I'm not a big I'm not very good at production, so I'm all I'm impressed by the production on all of these tracks. I'm like, Whoa, right? that sounds great. So I have no notes on on that ever, but uh, the uh, the uh, actual like composition kind of left me wanting as far as just I didn't ha I didn't have that much to latch on to, you know. I don't know. It was a very it was nice. It was a nice sweet little melody, and that was it, kind of you know, with really great production around it. Um, but uh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my note. <laughs> I got so swept up in the the heartbeat like I after reading the title and then I could hear it that was like oh that's so clever and it fits is this love story um yeah and the tone it was kind of went from hopeful to sort of heartbreaking just all very much on target this was definitely one of my favorites just for the uh, the heartbeat thing was clever maybe a little gimmicky but it really drew me in and felt like it fit really cool oh, nice well, thank you leo we're ready for the next one all right next we have neon crush from victor shu hope you say that that way here we go I think Gavin's going to start us off on this one. Thanks. I, I always manage to forget that somehow. Um, very cool. Very cool. Loved a big, a big drum and bass guy. Um, like literally have a, there's like a react on my discord server. That's like a grandpa listening to drum and bass. Um, that's about how everyone who shares a draft, I'm like, you should add breaks to that. Um, so really love that, uh, that interpretation. Um, yeah. I, again, like Ben was saying, the production on these is awesome. I kind of want synth tutorials from any of the finalists. 
Um, <laughs> uh, it'd be interesting also, you know, usually with the more orchestral ones, we're, we're tending to guess, like, is it a, a live musician or is it VSTs? Uh, it'd be interesting to know on this one if anyone is using hardware for their synths um, versus, versus software ones. Um, or like emulation or whatever. Um, and because uh, there's a there's a range of really successful results on here. Um, so I'd be I'd be interested in, in that. Um, yeah, I would say there's, you know, uh, I, th I think especially uh, at the toward the end, there's definitely a, a memorable motive um, there. I could have gotten more of that. Um, you know, that's kind of the, the crowd here where we're a, a melodic bunch. Um, so I, I could have, uh, I could have gotten a little bit more of that toward the beginning. Um, that's, that's the main, uh, sort of, um, direction of, of improvement I'd give for this, but really cool, really creative take. Uh, uh you obviously know your production super well. Yeah. And I, uh, I was kind of surprised at how much I liked this one because it is so not, uh, city pop, <laughs> but I still really liked it. And I think it's like even though you have such a short amount of time to to do this this one really managed to take you on a little journey in a satisfying way in uh in a way where like there's very clear kind of um <laughs> scene setting and then building up into that when the guitars come in with the uh shoot i can't tell you what what mode it is off the top of my head but i think it was like a flat two in there the uh the the more dissonant dark thing building up to that moment and then riding that out it was structurally fantastic um so i really enjoyed it and though and it did develop even though there wasn't like a, a melody up until the very end still like taking the 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 opening chord progression and then leaving it to go to the guitar thing and then bringing it back at the end in a way more hype um, upbeat section there's really there's great musical development um yeah my one note for the composition would be that the melody at the end that comes in uh it's really hard to write a melody like it's really hard to write a good melody so that was like uh, up until the very end i was like wow even though there's no melody i'm really really enjoying this and then the melody came in and i was kind of like okay that's that's a fine melody but i wasn't like wow i love this <laughs> Um, mm. but yeah, the production was great. Um, cool. A lot more of a darker edge as far as like interpreting the picture from the ones, you know, the ones that I was here for, um, which I liked. It was cool. Yeah. Great work. <laughs> I'll let Harney go next. Cool. Yeah. This was definitely the most like the input music when I was painting this. So that's something else I was curious about today is sort of music is the input for the visual art and kind of seeing that happen in reverse. And this was definitely the most similar to the inspiration I got uh, for this. Just the whole, I think, EDM, like this one had my foot tapping. I hope you guys couldn't hear it too loudly. And um, I just enjoyed it. It felt very genre specific. I could see the cyber cycle flying through the streets on this one. So it was very evocative and really drew me in. I love this one. Yeah, like to piggyback off of that, I, I got very um, Spider-Verse sort of vibes from it. And I haven't really heard this score in a while, in a while but um, I just got that, those flashes of action and cartoon stuff happening. And it was, it was really cool. And I, yeah, I didn't mind at all that there was really no theme. In fact, I was admiring the production all the way through. I think that's one thing we all agree on is that production was really good for this one. It's just, it, it's so uh, interesting. And the flow is there throughout that you feel like there's always something to listen to and pay attention to. And that transition before that, like into the drop was so, so cool. So I really, really like that. And yeah, I find my, I found myself not listening to the, the harmony, the, the melodic choices or anything. I was just, I was just listening to the production entirely, the, the drums and all of that. So yeah, re really, really great work. It definitely sounds like, you know, a lot of what you're doing for, for this style. So great stuff, Victor. All right. Thanks, Victor. Ready for the next one? Okay. 
Next up is Across the Lights from Jake and Ivy. I think Hardy's starting us off on this one. Cool. Um, so different from the last one. So I keep saying that, but it's astonishing how different the interpretations of this are. Um, yeah, super orchestral and moody, uh, you know, playing up the human connection vibe. I was getting that really well. I thought the vocals were nice too. And I, I just like the contrast of this sort of timeless music feeling with this very sterile cold looking visual i can see that working really well cinematically just as a, a contrast point beautiful uh, heartbreaking and all the things that i want this image to communicate really nailed it it's a um, bit <laughs> the uh yeah i like uh um I really like the way everything kind of came in very, um, I don't know what the word is. Like everything kind of, kind of snuck in. Um, and it built to, I, I liked the like climactic moment that, that you sold me on that. Um, that felt earned and, uh, and, uh, powerful. Um, it is kind of a, it's a bold move not to use any synths in in one of these tracks you know because the the picture kind of screams like oh yeah cyberpunk synthy something so not doing that is like a, a, a an interesting choice it, it puts it into another different perspective kind of like uh yeah more human more about these people more uh more kind of the more things change the more they stay the same people will always be people kind of vibe um yeah i i liked it <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> this one is right on my alley in terms of uh, production and i just really love um the string programming in this overall not just the voicings and everything but uh also also how it sounds overall in the mix it sounds super smooth very very lush and String sampling and string programming is not necessarily easy. It depends on the library that you have. But this one in particular, um, I think you used the library exactly how it was intended because it has a very emotive sort of presence to the sound and the samples. So I think you took advantage of that really well. I was only nudged slightly out of the experience by one repetition note. I believe it was an F sharp or something, but you had a note that was sustaining and yep. then it cut off for a second. And then it came back in. So I don't know if you did that deliberately, like you wanted to end the note and then you wanted to play it again, or if you intended to do it as a rebo. If you wanted to do it as a rebo, that might have been better just because you could hold the sustain pedal and then replay that note while that note is sustaining so that you trigger an actual rebo sample if that's included in the library. If not, 
maybe it just works to kind of taper off the sustain manually and then bring in the next uh, the next node. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, just the programming was really, really solid. And it was also interesting because the overall soundscape felt it, like it was filled up, but yet there weren't that many instruments. So you had a light, a really good control of the overall soundscape. Um, the frequencies felt really balanced. Like I like the low end thumps and it, you know, they came in every so often that really juiced up the, the low end. And, um, yeah. And then, and then the highs taken by those strings and the harp and stuff was, was all just beautiful. So yeah, just, just really, really good, um, writing and production overall. Yeah. Loved, loved the sound of those strings. Um, <clears throat> I think compositionally this, uh, you know, this did some of my, this, this was one of my favorites, um, uh, in that, um, you know, Chris would pro probably heard the, the modulations more specifically than I did, but in, in broad strokes, I was hearing this sort of device of adding flats over time or modulating the four key over time, um, which you find really commonly in the, in the music that I, that I look at, like in, um, East Asian media music. Um, I thought that was really cool and I really, this was a much more, um, you know, kind of as, as Ben was saying, um, more of a sort of mystical interpretation. Like to me, one of these two is a, is, has received a great mystical stage mission of some sort, um, which is really interesting against the technological backdrop. It's more somebody in the comments, I think said that it reminded them of, uh, of Ori music, which was interesting. Um, I think that was, that was a really, uh, cool interpretation. Um, and yeah, those, we yeah, wonderful job with, the with the strings programming. I, I was sucked in for sure. Nice. Well, thanks, Jacob. On to the next one. We have bit crushed from David Welsh. Zimmer, Danny Elfman, and like Elon Musk had a baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be like what you would get out of Elon. that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but anyway, I think 8-Bit, you want to start us on? Oh, sure. This one. Um, yeah, I was thinking at the very beginning, I was thinking, oh, this is such an interesting uh, contrast to the last piece because it did start off with the same kind of, you know, um, romantic string orchestra thing. But even just having like the synth bass underneath that sold it a lot more as being a, a relevant interpretation of the picture. Like, oh yeah, there's something tying it together. And then obviously it went um, went all in on the on the uh, synthesized thing when the groove came in and everything, um, which was cool. I kind of almost wish it was. Uh, 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 I mean, this is a dumb comment, maybe. Because <laughs> I kind of almost wish it was more. It held back on the synth thing more and was more subtle in that way um, because I liked the opening so much. 
but it was it was great. Also, what what the the choice he made uh, was also great. Um, and having the groove come in, having the 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 there's a lot of uh, sung vocal melodies in these mm-hmm. examples, which is kind of interesting. I guess there's something about the art that evokes that. It's very ethereal, right? Like yeah. it open. It's a big space, sort of. Yeah, true. I don't know. Yeah, but having that over top of the uh, the groove, going into the triplet groove was a nice surprise. I didn't expect that, and it felt good and everything. Um, and this, I think, was is super strong compositionally as far as like the melody uh, feels. Felt um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I was sold by it. Uh, I wasn't thinking about what the melody was doing. I was just enjoying it. You know what yeah. I mean? And then right. uh, probably one of the more uh, uh, complicated uh, harmonic arrangements that we've seen so far too, but in a way that was totally like, uh, felt totally natural to like stellar job. Super, super mm-hmm. enjoyed this one. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, the opening was was my favorite part by far. Um, the programming in there was just very, very smooth, very similar to the, the previous uh, track as well. But oh man, I just have like so much I want to say, but there's not that much time. Um, just yeah, the, the vibe was there from the beginning. And then like Abit said, I wish um, we held back just a little bit from the synth stuff. Like I feel like when when you transition to the big EDM moments or the big synth moments, it hit me so hard that I almost wish that it was not as hard because of the, such the beautiful lyrical mood you set up at the beginning. I, I wanted more of that, you know, and harmonically too, it suited that beginning arrangement so well too, you know, but I kind of understand like you, you wanted to build up the uh, arrangement and the, the feel of it before breaking out into more of that ele- electronic element. So that, that makes sense. But I think that special chord was that, that two half diminished, seven chord so in the key of a flat that would be uh, b flat half diminished seven and that's so so special even if you go back you know two back to the one in that case but i think you went two to the six yeah in a flat you went to the f minor after that so that's a very natural progression too but yeah that chord especially so so special there that half diminished sound is so spectacular you used it really effectively throughout as well so um yeah really really pretty um, I'd be curious to know if our friend David here writes um, trailer music or pitches for trailers, uh, because this felt like a pitch for the trailer for like the film that this image represents. Um, and if that was the goal, I think it really achieved that goal super well. Like it, it hit, it hit beats like in the cinematic sense, not in the musical sense. It, in a way that was paced very much to the way that, you know, the contemporary trailer to me. Um, so that, that was really effective. Um, and uh, it was cool how when it was one of those sort of inflection points, we really changed direction, right? And we even like at the end had sort of the, the turning off sound um, that, that helped to, to reinforce that. Um, so that, that, that was, I thought that was a really cool kind of interpretation of the, of the assignment in general, right? Because, you know, um, what are short cinematic moments that are roughly 90 seconds? Well, trailers are like that. Um, so I thought that was a really cool thing to do with this. That's really interesting because the image is basically set up like a movie poster. It's, it's that composition room for a title at the top and a tagline at the bottom. So it's that makes sense that so many people would, would go that route. Um, the begin, I, I heard Blade Runner Tears in Rain instrument, whatever that is, in the beginning, <laughs> immediately keyed on that. So I see you, David. See what you did there. Um, <laughs> I really like that, that very sharp break, like so sharp, I thought it might be over, like Sopranos finale over. That's that cool, like motorcycles doing a jump and it goes super slow motion. So really evocative. All of these are making me think what I need to paint next in this series and see where the story goes. So uh, really strong and genre appropriate and exciting. All that great stuff. Nice work. 
Yeah, this is going to be a hard one, guys. It oh. is. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan. Right. What were you saying? Yeah, sorry. I was muted. I was talking. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll go on to the next one. Uh, we have... That was... A, everybody got a go, right? Yeah, we're good. All right. Next, we have Love at First Scan by Michael Popescu. <laughs> This one is so harmonically fluid like you couldn't i mean you start off in such a nice open innocent key of like a minor so you establish that that sad sort of feeling but then you very easily go to a major like you throw in that's the the, the the parallel major you transition to um i don't even remember because there's there's so many different places this goes harmonically but i feel like the instrumentation is sort of enhancing what you're choosing musically to do in terms of the harmony and the, and the melody. Um, yeah, and then, and then you have the, the hybrid elements, right? You have the synths and the, the electronic stuff in there. But my, my attention was mainly focused on the harmony. And I think you evoked a very sort of ambiguous sound, but it was also consistent in terms of the feeling. Like it felt rooted in a very specific feel to it as well. So yeah, I'd have to listen to it again to, to find more things to say, but I really enjoyed listening to it throughout because it had a very sweet sound to it. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, I would say, um, you know, I think you're the part of what made some of the melodic choices strong is that they were they were very aware of the the journey that the harmony was on, and they were emphasizing. It was very uh, emphatic and very yeah. They were emphasizing. The degrees that were changing right like oh we added a black note that's that black note is taken right there oh we added a white note yeah yeah it's really obvious by what the main melody is doing mm -hmm. um so i think that's a really great thing to do um in a piece like this where we're switching modes like that um so that that part was was super well done um yeah cohesive sound environment too um, again, I think it's it's challenging stuff to to mix these electronic elements and and more organic elements. So, yeah, nice nice job. I was I was convinced by that. Yeah, <clears throat> it reminded me of um, the uh, uh, Rimsky Korsakov's Song of the Indian Guest, like very um, not on the nose, but very blatant shifting between major and minor. Um, but not in a way that sounded uh, sounded uh, forced or gimmicky. Like you really rode that line perfectly and managed to get the same romantic attitude out of that kind of shift that um, that Rimsky Korsakov piece gets. So I was super impressed with the composition. And then yeah, um, uh, the hybrid orchestra synth thing, very cool. Um, that kind of synth melody over the string part towards the end it was like the very first note of the synth melody i thought it was going to be an oboe and then by the second note it was like oh it's a synth oh cool so that 
Lots Same. of fun little moments like that. Of go, oh, what's next? Oh, what's happening now? Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> so I liked it a lot. <clears throat> Love this one. Uh, super evocative visual story. Like the beginning was, it was a movie trailer. It's like their eyes meet in the crowd, you know, walking on the rainy street kind of vibe, which looked like the perfect kind of thing that happened before our image here. I love it. Just the visual storytelling, sound environment. I love that term. This That felt really well-established and consistent and really put me in there with this one. So uh, one of my favorites so far. I keep saying that, but really excellent. It gets harder and harder as it goes on. I know. <laughs> it's, it's tough, but we have three more. So Next up, we have Cyber Romance from Frank Battery. Start us me. Off on this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, liked liked the uh, the approach here. Um, I thought it was really interesting um, how how Frank took. Um, it seems like the choice that was made is, you know, because I'm mixing w one of the ways in which I'm going to mix electronic instruments and orchestral instruments is I'm going to have the the orchestral parts take the mid range and the high range, and then the low range is mostly going to be occupied by these synthetic swells, uh, which I thought was with the, I thought that was super cool. Um, I think that one thing texturally that could have been um, even more creative would be maybe they swap places at one point, right? So they the melody gets handed over to synths, and the swells are now you know, bass trombones or some, something organically driven. Um, but wouldn't have had that idea without you doing this first. Uh, so uh, I, I think that's a really cool way to, you know, um, to mix these instruments, try to assign them to certain frequency ranges for parts of your song. Um, so yeah, super cool idea. Yeah. Um... It's interesting for the first half of this, uh, it was interesting how many different interpretations there were. And then the last few all have seemed to be uh, very similar aesthetically. Um, but that makes it, which makes it hard to, to judge kind of, but also, uh, it's interesting to see all these different versions of a similar concept of the hybrid, uh, synth orchestra thing. Um, <clears throat> Which I think makes a lot of sense, given the the art, you know, the 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 people in the center of this world. Kind of, I I get the the trying to put something organic and and human sounding in the in a in a more synthesized, colder environment. So, um, yeah, it was cool. It was interesting. I uh, I think that uh, Gavin's right. Like, uh, it'd be cool to play around with the concept even more. And stretch it out even more but what you had 
was very, very interesting. Hardy. Yeah. Uh, what I really loved about this one is I could hear rain in the beginning. It, this one was more about like that establishing the world, like some long meandering shot through the city before we eventually arrive at our story, which I found really cool and evocative, just created this world very authentically and powerfully. So I, I really love that, that, kind of tinkling rain treatment. I'm not sure which instrument or device did that, but loved it. Really strong. This is getting harder as we go somehow. Yeah. Unfortunately, right now, I don't quite remember. Sorry. Get away. Said welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can't, I don't quite remember that the instrument either, but uh, I, as, as I was listening through this, I felt myself, enjoying it more and more. And I think especially at the end, um, you used quite a few minor six chords. Um, and then when you transition back to the tonic, especially when you put it in major, uh, really, really pretty. So like a minor six back to E major, for example, that sound is really pretty. And when that E major chord hit, it reminded me of the very last second of uh, monster Inc. you know, when Sally looks into the room and, uh, Boo's like, Katie, there's that, uh, literally identical um high e major chord that just rings out really really prettily and it just gave me those those vibes again so yeah very very delicate piece and like hardy said it set up the mood uh very well and yeah again one of those pieces where i found myself not analyzing as much but more just listening and enjoying so great work nice all right on to the next one this is a, a different title we have As the Rain Poured Our Love Burned from Kit Keenly Sand. start us off on this one yeah um everything i was thinking you know what this song should do next it like delivered on that weirdly so this one was just right on track for me nice. um no really great especially when it it went from being very sweet and instrumental into just the right little hint of uh synthiness that i think grounded in the genre uh, a nice kind of uh, pace, I think, too. It, it sort of carried you along, established the world, and introduced you to the story. I, I think that resonates with me more than the, you know, very hard-hitting crescendo entries. Mm. This is more of a quiet moment, weirdly, surrounded by all this chaos in my mind. So that that really fit for me. Awesome. Once again. Eight bit. Is it me? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I like the little motif 
Bum, 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 bum. It was Good. nice. It was simple. It, but the it being simple meant that um, the kind of changing harmonization of it could could make it feel like like the melody the same melody could deliver on on a different kind of feeling with every iteration depending on how it was presented you know so I thought that was a really strongly written phrase um, it's kind of funny to hear an entry with no strings in it. I was like, "Where's the strings?" <laughs> but that's a me problem, not a not an entry problem. I was expecting something really hardcore with the all caps like typographied title right. too. So <laughs> yeah. I was kind of like, and, you know, subtle, nice, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah same with uh, entry number eight, bit crushed. I was not expecting the strings and stuff at the beginning, so. Yeah, it's always nice when you can, I guess, uh, change expectations or, um, yeah, pl play around with them. And yeah, this one kind of has a really sweet simplicity to it that is just just really enjoyable. Um, again, another piece where I don't really feel like analyzing it very much because it it it's not really trying to be something that it's not, you know, and it 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 has very uh, simple ideas but puts them forward in a in a very reflective but impactful way. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I found I found the the artistic style of this one really creative. Um, like to me, this sounded like Fez Fez like disaster piece Fez soundtrack type of vibe. Plus some like it's like Fez plus Bardcore, like some loot players or something, and then. Fez upgrades his synths and some really hi-fi synths come in at the end, um, which is a cool, yeah, it's just a cool journey to go through in terms of like the, the textures and instruments used. Um, so really liked that. Um, I definitely agree with what was said before of like that, you know, you stuck to a simple motive and it, and it really, you know, it planted a, a seed really nicely. Um, I think we we can all remember how that song went, and that's always a great thing for for melodic music to do. Well, we got one more. You ready for it? Let's do it. We've got Cyber Love from Vida Music. Here we go. <laughs> I'm first, right? I should just Do start it. talking. I shouldn't ask. Go for um, it. The uh, it was cool. I feel like a lot of these earlier exam or earlier um, entries started off with like orchestral, you know, organic music, and then surprise, here's some synth stuff. And this one went the other way around, um, and it was cool. It was really effective. I liked um, starting off. I liked like. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to collect myself here. The the kind of pulsing 
uh, I don't know if it's side chained or what the, the 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 pulsing synth kind of giving a beat to the music, giving a pulse to the music, without any express any you know drums or anything uh, very obviously kind of panning it out for you it was a really interesting way to give the music motion and this kind of like feeling of breathing um, while still keeping it very soft in a way and and tender um i was impressed by that a lot and i like i like the the way it, it ended on just that piano chord very nice i will say that writing melodies is so hard <laughs> it's tough to have a melody that's that's uh it's like the hardest thing in the world to write a melody but i would say my advice would be to work on trying to craft a melody that feels like every note should be there, you know? Like, don't just play something for the sake of playing it. Like, really, you want you want it to feel like nothing could change about this melody. If anything changed, it would be worse. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get that sense, but that's, like, you know, the hardest thing in the world to accomplish. So that's maybe not a super fair complaint. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's my complaint. <laughs> No, melodies are hard, man. Like it's, it's always one of those things where people ask, how do I write a melody? It's like, how do I answer that? You know, there's so many different ways you could do it. And oh, totally. it's just like, you just write melodies until you just, it becomes more natural, I guess. But um, this, this piece of me really felt appropriate as sort of a closer to me. Like it didn't feel overly bombastic, but it wasn't overly intimate either. It, it felt very comforting actually. And it almost like tied a sweet bow around a, a special present or something to me. So it was really pretty. Um, in terms of the chord progression, uh, very simple and diatonic again. The only thing I would have wanted to hear is maybe the use of the minor five chord. So in the key of D minor, you're kind of going B flat, C, D, and then you went back to C. But that fourth chord, I would love to hear just A minor or A minor seven. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. you have that seven in there that kind of fills up that spectrum and then you can go back to the six again and then you have that uh, really smooth sort of stepwise motion for me that would have sold it even more i think aside from that though um i actually didn't need that final chord myself um if you if you built it up you had that nice big crescendo and then let it i don't know the the sweep kind of fade away on its own and just leave it as it is for me that would have been fine for me the f major chord almost felt like it was just there um to be there as an ending but um i i, I personally didn't need it I, I really enjoyed everything up until that point and i thought it ended very nicely without it so that's just me what's up no i actually that's exactly the comment i was gonna make is it was one of those where i was like is it over oh wait right. it's not <laughs> and then did we really need that yeah but yeah. with the caveat that i don't know what i'm talking about at all <laughs> that was just uh, my impression but it was really nice it it puts you into a space once again and actually it's one of those as you also said chris i kind of i forgot to be thinking about clever things to remark about it because i was just enjoying listening mm -hmm. to it so i think that is a, a virtue for sure really nice work this has been incredibly hard to <laughs> put any above any other so oh, yeah congrats to everybody um i think the thing i think i've enjoyed about i've never th i've never sat down and listened to several hybrid orchestral orchestral songs in a row like this before and i already have opinions about how to do it uh, <laughs> because i have to that's that's where that's where we are um so here's a really specific opinion i just started having five seconds ago um that is that um so one interesting thing that you were doing is that toward the end there we are introducing the orchestra the um you know the in, the intensity is is going up because some of the synth elements are like the the saw synths and have more of this like sort of high mid and kind of brassy tone if you had brass in that i couldn't tell because that space was being eaten up by those that that kind of those buzzy scents that you had. Um, so just a just sort of like a mixing, like a textural note that, yeah, that it, it seems like to my ear at least, saw waves are similar to 
kind of the bitiness of brass. Um, so if you want room for brass, you might have to get them down in the mix a little bit. All right. Well, that was it. That was the last one. So give us a second to review the score sheet. Um, Hardy, I think you need to hit enter to let your last score go in and we can, it's going to upset oh, everything here. So dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look one at that. Last button. Yeah. It did, it did change. Okay, um, I think I'm good. All right. Let's see. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a second to cool. reorder these. I will, I will mention uh, since it's a unique aspect to this, I will mention Hardy's favorites, which are mm. the ones the artist felt hit on the relevance. There were four tracks that all hit uh, the same way for the relevance. Those were Fates Intertwined from Kenanaya Dean Belial, uh, Neon Crush from Victor Xu, uh, Love at First Scan, Michael Popescu, and As the Rain Poured, Our Love Burned, Keith Kindly Side. They had the highest according to the artist, so that says something. Uh, all right, and then some honorable mentions. These are not the top three, but just honorable mentions. The highest score for relevance went to Kenaniya Dean Belial with Fates Intertwined. The highest overall score for production went to Victor Xu, Neon Crush, and the highest on composition was My Michael Popescu, Love at First Scan. I also want to mention that the top eight tracks, there are seven points gap between them. Like this, it's incredibly close. Like the top track is one point away from number two, which is one point away from number three. Like it's, it's, it's intense. So everybody did awesome. These were all great. It's just the minor whims kind of pushing it one way or the other. Um, but third place goes to I don't take off the, the text here so I'm not putting everybody's in there. Third place goes to Cyber Love from Vida Music. Bravo. Ooh. Congratulations. Second place, Love at First Scan, Michael Popescu. And the first place winner, the January 2024 composing competition, is Neon Crush from Victor. Oh yeah. Victor. Oh yeah, where's the Yeah. The Next time I Next missed time. it. Time. <laughs> Three months, well, baby. Thanks yep. everybody who watched. Thank you everyone who submitted your music. This was a fun one. Very different. And thank you always to all of you guys for judging. For Chris, right. Gavin, Hardy, 8 bit. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Any final remarks before we listen to Victor's track on one more? I think we should let Hardy uh, wrap it up. Yeah, actually, I, I really just want to thank everybody who participated and you, Ryan, for inviting me. This has been incredible and just such an unbelievable artistic honor for me that so many artists built this incredibly beautiful art inspired by something that I made. That's just an incredible thrill for me. And I was so profoundly impressed by the craftsmanship and knowledge of on display here just really amazing so thank you to to ryan for having me and for everyone who participated uh this is a tremendous thrill for me so great work and thank you i'm glad this worked out it's unique um, we'll have to go the other direction you have to we'll give you a piece of music and you can have your audience yeah draw to it oh I'd love nice. to do that. Someday. that's good yeah do it. All right. So let's send us off with Victor's track one more time. Thank you, everybody. And if you don't know, we do these every three months. So we'll see you in April for the next one. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Here we go. Congratulations, <laughs> Victor. Yep.